Welcome to this segment of Soul, Silence, and Sound. This is brought to you by Be Simply. Stars, trees, clouds, and the moon. They all have a meaning and they look just like you. Welcome to this segment of Soul, Silence, and Sound in conjunction with a Soul and Luna full moon musing and today we are tipping over around midnight into that full moon on the north american continent and no matter when you're listening to this segment it will meet you exactly as it was meant to be (laughs) so we had our new moon leading us in and right now we're at that game over and pun intended moment here on planet earth and within this earth plane there are many things happening and oftentimes hard to keep up however what is quite ironic as i use that tongue-in-cheek game over is that the games that have been played against humanity are quite visible and will continue to get louder and louder and it's it's this moment It's a metaphorical and a literal moment that these veils have been dropping and our ancestors and current traditional leaders that are still uh, practicing on this planet and out beyond here uh, have been systematically holding space for us to awaken. And this awakening process, and that word's probably overused at this point, point or maybe people are tired of hearing it because they have an expectation and an attachment to what that means and so there's responsibilities on the shoulders of those that were destined to awaken so sometimes people think oh I gotta wait till something happens well it's kind of like being in a bad relationship and you realize the person that all of a sudden you could see them a lot clearer than you did before And you're awakened and you're like, whoa, and they're not going to be the person that is your change agent in your life unless they've really stepped up and decided to do their inner work. So on a macro level, that's what's happening right now is that the veils have dropped so many times that you can't unsee what you saw and the people that you might have formerly held up on a pedestal, you see them for what they are and the game's over. No more games here, not those kind of games at least. And now you must keep on going. So here we go now. So those of you that are well awake, those of you that are starting your awakening process, pay attention to the people maybe that you uh, pointed fingers at, maybe they upset you years back, but Those people are people that you can go to and get a hug. And then as you go through your mind blowing moments, you know, this is a staggered experience that we're having to remember the people maybe that you didn't get or you thought they were crazy and on and on and on. Or maybe you still think some of them are crazy, but those are the people you want to go get a hug from because they've been at this awakening process longer and it was designed that way so that one, the collective consciousness wouldn't go into a psycho spiritual psychosis. And that way you would have someone to hug and give you a piece of pie and a cup of coffee. So when I say game over, it really means that. So those that are awake enough or committed to staying awake, understand that you don't need to keep fighting the, the tricksters. It's time to move forward, start to really uh, imagine outside the box, start building new systems and realize the people that you admired, that the old structure of society is going through its uh, timely and necessary dissipation and death, and then it will go through its own rebirth. And your responsibility, depending on your how wakeful you are, is to take that awareness and one, have a compassion for those that are going through their awakening and to give hugs 
and maybe some pie. And then from there, you really want to start building and leaning into what that means for you. So you don't have to keep repeating the the mind control because it becomes a mind control for everyone on either side of the fence. This is a whole new possibility that's going on. And as I mentioned, as we entered into the new moon, those paths continue to uh, separate and all that stuff that doesn't serve humanity and causes fear and control, that is what's dissipating out of each and every one of us, like it or not. And it's inviting each person to awaken a little bit more. And so the propensity might be, and this can happen is once you awaken and heal, you know, people have been all of a sudden awakening to things that were so deeply rooted in their subconscious mind that it could have been from their childhood, other lifetimes. And it's really the processing is happening very quickly. And so our tendency in the old world is to grasp at that and to wallow around and be the victim and participate in the abuse cycle. We've, we're coming out of a life of that was codependent with an abuser and a victim and an enabler. And so rather than get caught up in that, it's really important that you figure out how you can in your community say game over. I'm not participating in that anymore and how you can move forward from here. And some Things will be very effortless and then other things will take some navigating because it's not like, you know, everything's like a complete, a complete clean slate right in this moment. And so you're working with these aspects of yourself and others and doing a little bit of a cosmic dance. Yet know that you will be supported as you enter into this new phase. Now for all people that are impacted, which is all of humanity, because all of the structure of the world as we knew it was designed to control, manipulate, lie, and to do all these things unbeknownst to you, we all participated on some level. And that's what the awakening process has been. And so for many of you that are like, oh, when is this going to be over? Well, it's over now. Game's over. And you got to start building. Got to start building. Keep moving forward. And you'll understand along the way where you have to still like, it's kind of like breaking your leg and you have to wear crutches or use crutches for a while or one of those little scooter things that they have out now for your leg. But either way, you'll know how long you have to do that until that fully falls away. And as we go through this process together, individually and collectively, you will see. And the less you speak about all the things that are horrific, and we're part of a history that was hidden, the better. If it needs to be discussed with someone that's awakening and you need to help them understand and you need to give them a hug and hold their hand for a little bit, that's okay. That's, that's your role too, to be compassionate and help them not freak out so they can help with the, the forward motion and the building. And understand that universe is very patient. And so this takes as long as it needs to take we are going through, you know, these layers and layers of dimensionality to course correct, if you will, so humanity can continue in the way that we are used to relating to each other. Also, I would encourage each and every one of you, because there's been so much manipulation, especially really intensely over the last 10 years, that if you have an ideology that you're really attached to or sound bites, or you're still partially under the spell of mind control, realize that this is that moment that you have to hold yourself accountable in humbling down, bowing down to self and being like, whoa, I thought that was this way, but it's not. And it's okay to bow down to that, which you didn't realize. And by bow down, it means like, just soften your gaze. Like, wow, I thought it was like this, but it's not. And now I have all this data showing me it's like this, or I'm having this world experience 
or personal experience that feels rooted in physical reality that's showing me absolutely it's not what I thought. And then part of that process is is there to help you let go. And it can be kind of bittersweet when you realize something wasn't the way you thought. And then you're like, oh, I got to just let it go. So this will impact family units, relationships, businesses. This will impact your worldview, your theological view. This will impact everything. And that's because it was designed to impact everything. And now we get to untie all the knots that we co-created and we get to move forward. Where you can hold yourself really uh, diligently in this moment is understand and that a while back I talked about part of this moment is the, the slaying of the narcissistic pathology that was part of the mind control that led us here through several generations, depending what year you were born. But, you know, from World War Two, World War One, all and beyond that, there were these layers of narcissistic uh, infeeds that created the world as we know it. So those spells are being broken. The people that are really rooted in those pathologies and characteristics are really connected to what we call in uh, native indigenous perspective, the Wetico. It's a poison in the mind. And sometimes it's coupled with entities that are attached to these individuals, depending how deeply rooted it is. And so it's really important if you so do choose to take the space to really hold your line in a way that you haven't done before. Uh, because what's happening is these individuals that are still impacted or have an entity attached to them, they are going to get hungrier and hungrier because things are separating out. So you want to be mindful. You want to be aware where you and who you're interacting with. And you might be surprised that, you know, Aunt Betty isn't who you thought Aunt Betty was. And I can tell you, you just want to treat this moment kind of like you're going into the Star Wars bar. Don't panic. Don't be scared. Just keep your poker face and just observe. Observe what's going on and realize that these things have to work out right now. And it's most important that you protect your soul and that you keep yourself in a really pure and safe place because it's in these deeper, darker spaces that those hungry ghosts and hell beings and other entities will be lurking. And this, as I mentioned before, is accounted for in all faiths. This is accounted for in all indigenous practices. And the hardest part is that it's not accounted for in our sciences in this day and age because they didn't probably know how to handle that. And that's why back in the day, um, yeah, a community held certain people there that know how to exercise these entities for the community, for the land, and for individuals, especially if they don't have the strength to do them do it themselves. The good news here is that a lot of this will be lifting off on its own, but you want to stay clear. You don't want to get sucked up into that vortex. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like, please stay diligent with your spiritual practice. Number two, Stop attaching to people, places, and things that suck your energy and suck your soul. It's time to create space. Just push them way back. You don't have to create an argument. You don't have to declare anything. You don't have to cut cords. Just create space between you and them. Number three, be observant. Pay attention in your surroundings because everything, the veils are dropping. You're going to start to see things that make you wonder what's going on. Again, stay still. Keep your poker face and carry on. I mean, just observe. And then the fourth part is that it's time to create. So that's all the stuff to keep yourself safe. But the fourth one's the most important. It's 
time to move on and for you to all that know in your heart that you're ready to be in this age of mastery, that you are going to participate and show up. Mastery, as I've discussed before, requires discipline. It requires focus. They knew this. This is why there's all these different conditions to distract. There's technologies to distract. So it's a great time to get really disciplined. Start with yourself. Start from the inside out. And anything that doesn't have respect that you want to have discipline for an aspect or many aspects of your life, create space. Again, you don't have to make a big to do. It's best not to just create space. And if you're concerned that you don't know what you're destined to master in this next moment here on the earth plane, just take some moments to start to observe where your life is headed right now, where you're being uh, afforded opportunities, where you're being asked to refine what you already currently do or where you're being asked to serve in a different way. Trust in that process and listen deeply. And don't be afraid that there are things that you need to release and remove from your inner landscape to make an opening to really receive that information clearly. And finally, before we go into the meditation, I want you to understand that this era of mastery has nothing to do with what tech can do for you. This has everything to do with how you can really stay in governance of your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual body. And this is a process that doesn't, as I mentioned last week, go through hacking. It is a process that it deepens when you meet that spiritual practice. This can happen in many ways. And if you want to understand this one-on-one, reach out, but it, it opens up like a beautiful flower and it's very just wonderful when it happens and it will continue to happen as you meet that. So if inspired, take some time later on today or whenever you're listening to this this evening and just be, get really clear with yourself and really ask yourself, am I ready? And where am I still holding on? Where am I attached, especially, you know, these aspects of our system that you might be fully attached to and can't even imagine being without. And then you can ask yourself, what am I ready and have the capacity to master in this moment? And each one of us has our own alchemical relationship with ourself and the world around us and what we have to offer. This isn't a time to be looking at your neighbor. Pay attention to what you're doing. You know, if if you're mixing paints or in the kitchen or the chemistry lab or wherever, and you're spending too much time looking to the left or the right, that alchemical process is going to go away. You're sitting there working with metal. You're going to melt it all away. Pay attention, focus, focus. And there's many ways to learn that skill. And for those athletes out there, you know what that means, especially if you do it in a race format. You know how to stay in your lane, how to stay focused. So this is an exciting time. And, oh, I love saying that game over. And you can use that as your mantra anytime someone tries to entice you back in to the game. You can also use it when you're ready to really step away from the game that you've, you've been born into, reminding yourself that you have the free will to step away from it. So here we go. Here we go now. I welcome you into an upright seated position. And then take a nice gentle breath into your heart center. And then exhale out. Again, inhale. And exhale. 
Good. Again, inhale. And exhale. And then gently from there, I welcome you to follow your natural breathing pattern. Use that as a mantra. And if you have a busy mind in this moment, find a focal point down in front of you. And if thoughts come in, just allow them to be, but just return your focus, the spot and your breath and follow it through till we re reach that intersection as we lead into sound.
gently from there, I welcome you to gently lean back and recline or move fully into Shavasana, a prone position on your back with your palms facing upward as we transition into receiving sound. As you settle in, just take a nice gentle breath into the heart and out. Again, inhale. And exhale. One more inhale and exhale and then continue to follow your natural breathing pattern.
Taking a soft, gentle breath in and out of your heart center, gently breathing in and out. Again, inhale and exhale. Another one, inhale. And exhale. 
And then gently from there, I'm welcoming each and every one of you when you're ready to come up into a seated position. Otherwise, feel free to stay where you're at. And then when you do rise up, be mindful of your head. And as you come up into that upright seated position, taking a nice gentle breath in. And out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Good. And then gently from there, I welcome you to continue to breathe in and out. So I just welcome you in this moment to move gently into the next and just allow yourself to be with where you're at in this collective process and acknowledging where you're ready to continue to create space for yourself and also where you're ready to meet your mastery and this building of the next. And then if you have the capacity to help your brothers and sisters that might be going through their own very rapid awakening, extend a listening ear, a big hug, maybe a piece of pie, whatever you might feel that would meet them well to help them traverse through this. So here we go now, humanity. Lean into the possible. Lean into what you want. Clean up your neighborhood, your communities. Put the effort in locally, first interior, and then expand out to your your immediate communities. And then everything will get to be taken care of if we all participate that way. We're going to exit out. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank Kadri Scott, Dante Marino for participating, Random Rab. And I'm excited to have you exit out with River. Again, this is a new single from Kadri Scott. And we had some new undertones from Random Rab and his album on magnificence you can buy the vinyl from him look at uh, look it up on his website the links are below and support the arts feels like a good investment as we enter into the age of mastery where spirit and art will lead and those who are authentically there will be the founding humans at this moment until next time, this is Suzanne signing out with a full heart, a soft gaze. Yeah, a gentle smile, a deep something bite, changed. And It'll feel so strange now and if you show what remains. I will never say no. And like a river flows.
Just dance to